Hello, and welcome to Library Story Day. Um, it's jammy day, and I see no one got the memo. This is embarrassing. Um, well, today our story is going to be Romeo and Juliet by Bill Shakespeare. Before we start, does anyone have anything to share? Ooh, ooh. Yes? Okay, I wrote a poem last night. Two households both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our seat. From ancient grudge, break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands uncreep. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventurous, piteous overthrows, doffs with their death, bury their parents' strife. Hold on. The fearful passage of their death marks love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove is the two hours traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss our toil shall strive to mend. Well, uh, that was uh, beautiful. <laughs> Bill Shakespeare himself couldn't write anything better than that. Well. I guess it's time to get on with our story. <clears throat> it is sometime in the early 1500s. Benvolio and Romeo walk along a road in Verona, Italy. Benvolio tries to cheer up his friend, who has been rejected by a girl ooh, named ooh, Rosalind. Ooh. Yes, Please don't interrupt. Yes? Can I be Benvolio? Sure, Benny. And can my friend Roman, um, who's in the restroom, can he be Romeo? I guess. I'll go get him. Forget about Rosalind. We'll go to the costume party the Capulets are holding night. No, you'll meet someone new. I can't go to the Capulet party tonight. I am a Montague. We are sworn enemies. Enough of your father's shoes. We'll wear masks and no one will know who we are. Watch. Benfolio? Benfolio, where'd you go? Is, is it here? Is this, is this a ghost? Relax. It's just me. I was wearing a mask. Oh, I thought it was a spooky ghost. And if you go, you'll catch a glimpse of Rosaline. Well, if Rosaline is dead, and if you're wearing a mask, then how will I know if she's there? Good point. You're on your own for that one. Meanwhile, in the Capulet house, Lady Capulet talks with Juliet and Juliet's nurse. They have a question. Yes, Julia? Nancy? Okay. We have to go check on Laura and see. But we have a buddy system, so we have to go together. You may go. So it's time she married. Juliet, what do you think about that? Oh, I've never dreamt of such an honor. The good man Paris now seeks your hand. He'll be at the party tonight. Read his face like a diary and tell me if you like what's written there. I'll try to see what you want me to. So, are there going to be, like, words on his face? You said read it like a diary. Oh, honey, figurative language. Oh. Capulet's party. Romeo, Benvolio, and Mercutio enter wearing masks. Hey, Calvin, where are you going? I, I, I forgot to come to my own birthday party. You may leave. Um, hey, Marty, why don't you go check on Benny and Roman? Okay. They've been gone for a while. Welcome. I hope you'll all dance. Hello, yeah. this is Juliet. Who is that lady? Why? She's so radiant that she teaches torches how to shine. I've never seen such beauty. At the same time, Tybalt notices Romeo. He I draws his I, sword. I got the goal. I need to take an English lesson. I am so confused on where the story is going. <laughs> okay. Ciao. <laughs> That's the voice of a Montague. How dare he come here? What's wrong? Put down your sword. Uncle, that Montague. 
to do with our enemy. Don't create a war tonight. It's only young Romeo. All right, but I'll see the him later. At the same time, Romeo approaches Juliet. They fall in love instantly. I hope I do not offend you by approaching you with this without an introduction. Would you like to dance? Yes, please. Romeo kisses Juliet's hand. They dance dreamily only for a few moments before Juliet's nurse interrupts. Hold this! Juliet, your mother wants a word with you! Who is her mother? The lady of the house. Was he doing happy in it? around the Capulet's orchard. I should go home, but I can't take my body where my heart won't follow. I mean, obviously, I'd probably die of blood loss or my head would be attached to my torso, so I'd probably die from that too. A figure appears in the window above. Romeo sees that it is Juliet. No, why, it is Juliet, more beautiful than the sun. Juliet is awake, thinking about Romeo. She doesn't know he's outside. Romeo, oh Romeo, why must you be named Romeo? It is only your name that is my enemy. And a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Oh Romeo, give up your name for me. Call me your love and I won't be Romeo. Who's there? I would tell you my name if I didn't hate it so much. Why not like Shakespeare or Macbeth or super hot guy? Romeo, what are you doing here? The guards will kill you. I already killed them. It's love that brought me here. I have to know if you love me too. It would be worth it to say that you do. If you mean what you say, tell me. I'll send someone to set a wedding date. If you agree to a time and place, I'll know you are sincere. Hmm, well let's see. Flowers that nobody will see. A caterer that is non-existent. Food that nobody will eat that is brought by the caterer that is non-existent. And invitations to the parallel dimension black hole that it leads to everlasting doom, destruction, and death. Send somebody at 9 o'clock. It seems like 20 years until then. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Let us say goodnight until tomorrow. Early the next morning, Romeo visits Friar Lawrence at the monastery. Yes, John. Can can I be the friar? Can, can I please be the friar? I want to be it. I want to be it. I want to be it. Okay, you may leave. <laughs> Why are you up so early? Why are you up so early? Cause someone's to pray for you, Romeo. Chill, chill. Uh, I've been have weird dreams. That that's why I've been up. But I'm in love with Juliet of the Capulets. I was wondering if you could marry us today. Weren't you in love with Rosalind just a few days ago? This is completely different. Me and Juliet are joined in spirit already. I knew your love for Rosalind wasn't real. I couldn't stand her anyway. She knew it too. Now your love for Juliet may be a chance to bring peace between both your warring households. I'll hope, but you must be careful. The hasty often simple. Wait. Where was Romeo last night? His father said he was out all night. You know, Tybalt sent him a letter challenging him to a duel. Hmm. Well, Romeo's in no state to fight. He's completely lovesick, and Tybalt is a fierce fighter. Romeo, where were you last night? I had some business. I'm looking for young Romeo. So, I must speak with you in private. Ooh, the old lady's asking him out. In your dreams, little boy. Anyways, Juliet wants to know if you were telling your true feelings last night. I give you my word. I have set a wedding time at Friar Lawrence's. You look as lovesick as Juliet. I'll tell her. Talk about slow. I think old people rehearse being dead before they die. What news do you have? I'm so tired from the walk. Let me catch my breath. You have the breath to say you're tired. At least say yes or no. Tell me now. 
Pudding's on. Now eat your lunch. Then we'll be on our way to Fred Lawrence. That same afternoon, Benvolio and Marcuccio were talking in the street. Tybalt and several other Capulet men approach. I'd like a word with one of you. Just a word? Not a word and a fight? I'll bet if you give me a reason, Marcuccio. You're a friend of Romeo, aren't you? I am. What's your point? Just then, Romeo appears. Ah, there's my man. Tybalt, it is a good reason for us not to fight. Your name is now as dear to me as my own. You're a villain. Draw your sword. You can't talk to my friend like that. You're a villain. Draw your sword. Tybalt and Mercutio fight. Tybalt! <laughs> Mercutio! Stop! Tybalt stabs Mercutio and runs away. These shoes are these shoes are pretty nice. carries Marcuccio to a nearby house for help. He soon comes back. We're really nice shoes. Mercutio is dead. Just then, Tybalt returns. I got to need the other shoe, guys. Tybalt, draw your sword. You have killed my friend, and now one of us shall join him. I'm afraid it will have to be you. Guys, no, no fighting. No fighting. <laughs> oh, no. No fighting, Stop it! 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 The prince? I guess. You will leave. Should I go? Mm. Yes? I don't know where everyone else is. Can I go find them? Sure, Gerardo. Yay. Yeah. Benvolio, how did this begin? All the money in the world won't, tell, won't make me tell you what happened. About this much money? Okay. Tybalt killed Mercutio and Romeo killed Tybalt in revenge. Romeo must be with his life. No, Romeo does not deserve to die. He was only avenging his friend's death. I hear my exile. Romeo, if he comes back to Romeo, he must die. Meanwhile, Juliet is in her chamber. Her nurse bursts in. Well, after going through that door, man, I've lost my balance. What news do you have of Romeo? He's dead, he's dead! What are you saying? I saw it with my own eyes. I gave them going in Tybalt's chest. Wait, Tybalt and Romeo are both dead? Tybalt is dead and Romeo exiled. Romeo killed Tybalt. Oh, how can this be? What do you mean, dead? I mean dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. It's an adjective. It means no longer alive or lifeless. Oh, uh, dead. It also means not having the capacity to live. Oh, dead. Okay, I had it. Well, how can this be? There's no honesty in men. I can't curse the man I vowed to love only three hours ago. Romeo is good. It must have been that if he hadn't killed Tybalt, Tybalt would have killed him. Oh, I feel better already. Romeo is alive. If only he weren't exiled. I'll never see him again. Will I? I know he's hiding in Friar Lawrence's cell. Oh, give him this ring. No, I'm not your servant. Actually, you are. I am so sorry. Meanwhile, Romeo and Friar Lawrence are in the monastery. How can I live without Juliet? I mean, who's gonna wash my clothes? Who's gonna make me a sandwich when my belly gets all grumbly? Every dog, cat, and mouse is free to look at her, but I am not. The prince killed me with that one word. Exile. If Mamma and if yours, listen to me. There is a knock at the door. Juliet's nurse enters. Ah, nurse. How is Juliet? Does she think that I'm nothing but a murderer? She cries out all the time. Sometimes for Tibble, sometimes for you. I'll kill myself now. Wait, no, 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 no. Tisk, tisk, not big enough. Don't, don't kill the messenger or the friar, please. I'll 
kill myself. Now, Stop. If you kill yourself, Julia is destroyed as well. Now you and Julia are both alive, and tonight you can be together. Those who never appreciate the good fortune die miserable. Go now and comfort Juliet. Just be sure to leave Rome before daybreak. While you're in exile, you can make pardon from the prince. While you're in exile, you can make pardon from the prince. I'll go tell Juliet that Romeo is coming. She gives him the ring. This will give me comfort. Back at the Capulet house. Oh, wait. Um, what's going on? Okay. Romeo goes to a party. He falls in love. He falls in love with Juliet. Then they get married, and the rest will play itself out. Wait. So Juliet has to marry France, and then, but she likes Romeo. No, no, no. Romeo and Juliet are already married. She has to. She was supposed to marry a boy named Paris. Yeah. Let's just get back. Juliet's suitor, Paris, sits with the Capulet and Lady Capulet. None of them know that Juliet has secretly married Romeo. Juliet dearly loved her cousin Tybalt. She is so sick with grief that she will not come down tonight. I understand. A time of tragedy is not a time to fall in love. I will talk to her tomorrow when her sorrow is light. I think she will agree to marry you. Let's set the wedding date for Wednesday. I have hot yoga class Wednesday. Is Thursday good? Yeah. How I wish Thursday were tomorrow. At dawn, Romeo and Juliet stand on Juliet's balcony. You don't have to go yet. That was the nightingale singing, not the lark. It is not daylight that we see. I will claim that moonlight is daylight for you, Juliet. Anything that will make myself safe to seem stupid. No, you must go. That foul lark has warned us. It is morning. Now they will be looking for you. Juliet, your mother is coming. Farewell. Romeo climbs out of the window as Juliet's mother comes in. Juliet, you look pale. Are you still weeping for your cousin's death? Tears will not bring you back. I know from experience. I can't stop crying. You also grieve because that murder of Romeo is so bad. It's true that Romeo grieves my heart. But listen now, I come with happy news. On Thursday morning, you will marry the good Count Paris at St. Peter's Church. I don't want to get married yet. Yet if I was to marry, I'd rather marry Romeo, wh whom you hate before Paris. Here comes your father. Tell him that yourself. What's wrong, Juliet? Still crying? Haven't you heard the news? She's heard the news, but she'll have none of it. Aren't you happy that I found you such a good husband? I can't be thankful for your misguided love. Listen, Juliet, you'll be married on Thursday at St. Peter's Church, even if I have to drag you there. Oh, Mother, help me. Delay this marriage by a month, a week. I've had enough! Juliet's parents leave. Juliet's parents leave. Oh, nurse, how can I marry Paris when Romeo is so alive? Romeo is as good as dead. It's best you marry Paris. You're right. Please go tell my mother I've gone to Friar Lawrence. I must confess that I've displeased my father. I will. You fickle old witch. I'll never trust you again. I'll have to talk to Friar about a solution. And if he doesn't have one, I'm ready to die. Friar Lawrence is in his cell, talking with Paris. On Thursday, that's very soon. You know yet what Julia thinks. That sounds very typical of you. She weeps and weeps for troubled death. I do not dare talk of love. Her father thinks the sooner we marry, the sooner she will get forget the grief. Just then, Julia enters. Hello, my wife. I'm not your wife. Have you come to make a confession? That's none of your business. Father, do you have a moment? I do. Please pardon us, sir. It's on Thursday, Juliet. Friar, I have a problem. My heart is joined with Romeo's, and if I must marry someone else, why, well, I'd rather die. I have a remedy. Go home and agree to marry Paris. On Wednesday night, make sure your nurse is not in your chamber. Drink this file. It will make you appear to be dead for 24 hours. When you wake up, Romeo will be there to take you to Mantua, where he is living. 
You must not be afraid. Thank you. I'll have Friar John carry a letter to Romeo right away. The night before the wedding, Juliet's mother and nurse try to help her with her jewelry and dress. I'd like to be alone tonight. I'd like to say my prayers. The older women leave. What if this mixture should fail in some way? Or what if I wake up before Romeo comes and gets me? I could suffocate in the tomb alongside Tibble. Romeo, Romeo, I drink to you. The next morning, Capulet sends the nurse up to fetch Juliet. Wake up, wake up, it's your wedding day, wake up. She pulls open the bed curtains. You slug of bed, get up now. Why are you wearing yesterday's clothes? Oh no, oh, she's dead. Lady Capulet enters the room. What's all this noise about? Our sweet Juliet is dead. What a horrible day this is. My life, my only child. Lord Capulet comes in. Get Julia, Tom. The groom is here. Our child is already married to death. Capulet checks Juliet's pulse. He finds none. He is speechless with shock. Then Friar Lawrence and Paris come in. <clears throat> is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return. My child is dead. How cruel. I have been wrong and spited by death. The wedding has become a funeral. The bridal flowers must dress the corpse. Meanwhile, in his house in Mantua, Romeo wakes up. How strange. I had a dream where all men were created equal and would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of the character. Oh, and, and later on, Juliet found me dead and she kissed me and I came back to life. That was really bizarre. Okay. Romeo's servant, Balthazar, comes in. Whoa, wait, I haven't been in the story. Can I be someone? Sure, Betty. Go, if you want to be in the story. Okay, I'll be Balthazar. Ah, Balthazar, what news is there from Verona? If Juliet is well, then nothing can be wrong. I'm sorry to report that she is dead. Juliet sleeps in the Capulet vault. No! No! Wait, wait. Juliet's dead? No, no, no. You'll see. Romeo doesn't know the truth, so he buys a fatal poison. Then he hurries toward the Capulet tomb. Meanwhile, Friar John goes to see, goes to see Friar Lawrence's cell. Friar John, welcome back from Mantua. What does Romeo say? A brother of our order went with me to Mantua. He'd been taking care of the sick, so officials fear we might be carrying illness. We are not allowed to enter the city. Then who took my letter to Romeo? Yeah. I could get no one to take the letter to Romeo. We were all afraid. They were all afraid of the sickness. Oh no, that letter was urgent. Friar John, quickly, hand me a crowbar. Julia will wake in three hours, and I'll bring her here and write to Romeo quick again. Meanwhile, Paris and a page go to Juliet's tomb. And if anybody comes, whistle. Like, like this? <sighs> no, just, just yell. Like this? Is this loud enough? No, no, no. Send signals. I just forget it. The page obeys. Paris begins scattering flowers on the tomb. Then he hears footsteps. Who's this? Paris sees Romeo and Balthazar with a torch, axe, and a crowbar. He quickly hides so he can watch them. Balthazar, give me the tools. Give this letter to my father tomorrow. If you return to see what I shall do, I will kill you. I will be gone, sir. Balthazar is suspicious, but she leaves. Then Paris comes out of the shadows. That is Romeo, the man who killed my love's cousin and caused her to move to die in turn. 
the list of rest of the He should be in exile. Stop, you villain Montague. I caught you in Verona, you must die. Your funeral is overdue. Please, <clears throat> you have good reason not to fight. I am a very desperate man. I hereby arrest you. You're forcing me to kill you. They fight, and Paris falls. I am slain. Please pray me with Juliet. In faith, I will. Romeo opens the tomb and lays Paris in it. Here lies Juliet, and here lies Tybalt. Forgive me, Tybalt. And Juliet, even death could not conquer your beauty. I drink this to you. Romeo drinks the poison and dies. Meanwhile, Friar Lawrence runs up to where Balthazar is waiting. Who's there? A friend. Balthazar, who's in the tomb lighting up the lamp? My master Romeo, he's forbidden me to follow him in. Then I'll go alone. Lawrence enters the tomb. Whose blood is this? Romeo and Paris too slain? And now the lady stirs? Juliet wakes up. Father, where's Romeo? Come away, my lady. Your husband lies dead in Paris too. Come quickly, we must take you to a nunnery. No, I will not go. Romeo, how selfish. You take all the poison for yourself and leave none for me. Juliet stabs herself with Romeo's dagger. Oh, happy dagger, let me die. Meanwhile, Paris's page, alarmed by the noise, goes to find some guards who search the grounds. They discover all the bodies, and they stop the friar and Balthazar. Then the guards summon the prince, the Montagues, and the Capulets. Such a hour. Paris is slain and Romeo is dead. Juliet, who's been dead two days, lies newly killed. And we've caught a friar, Romeo's man, Balthazar, carrying tools to open a tomb. Look how our poor daughter bleeds. My son is dead. What more could go wrong? This must be cleared up. Friar Lawrence explains all he knows of the story, beginning with the wedding of Romeo and Juliet. Friar, we have grown to you to be an honest man, but we need more information. My master gave me this letter to give to his father. The letter confirms what Friar said. Romeo wrote that he bought a poison so that he might die here and be buried with you yet. Capula wants to see what your fear has caused. Everyone has been punished. Death is the only winner. Oh, Montague, give me your hand. I cannot offer my daughter a marriage to your son, but this is the best I can do. I will raise a gold statue of Juliet so all Verona will remember her. A sad piece this is. There has never been a story more full of love than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Romeo and Juliet, Bill Shakespeare. Now, does anyone have any questions? Wait, when are we going to start the story? I have a question. Can this one be about Star Wars? Yes, oh, I have a comment. Timmy, he when we were in the bathroom, he hit Marty. He hit hey, her. That never happened. He hit me a lot. Who it, saw? It, it, it really hurt. John. <laughs> then, then I saw hey, Julia and Roman holding hands. Yeah. And, so, oh, and, and, and then Roman and Tibble started fighting. And then Roman punched Tibble in the face. You started it! Okay. No, no fighting, no fighting. It wasn't me! You started it. Break it up! You started it, Timmy. Library story time is over. But, no. Wait, did we Go start? Home. Bye. I'm just gonna. You were asleep the whole time. I don't know what happened.